Dr. Thomas Gear says, the art car can be whatever the artist wants, as long as it doesn't affect the aerodynamics if the car is going racing. No layers and layers of paint because it would add weight. The idea for an art car came from French auctioneer and racing driver Hervé Paulin in 1975. The art cars are in high demand with cultural institutions, the Louvre in Paris, the Guggenheims in New York, and Bilbao, Spain. None of the artists got paid. They were paid for their supplies only. I think that's where the authenticity comes in. We're not using money to lure people to the project. It's the freedom the artists enjoy. Artists have always been fascinated with cars. In the Futurist Manifesto, published in 1909 in Paris by the founder of Futurism, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, the car was hailed as our modern day sculpture. In truth, only a select few of BMW's art cars have actually been physically painted by the artists themselves. Most worked with one-fifth scale models applying a design that was later transferred to the actual car by specialists, in particular Munich artist and longtime BMW collaborator Walter Maurer. Dr. Gears continues, Warhol was a different story. He sent in various proposals. He sent in designs with a flower pattern, then a camouflage pattern, and then he sent in a design where the entire car was covered with brown paint, including the windows. What to do? Because the car was supposed to race at Le Mans. So finally, Andy said, you know what? Send me the tickets to Munich and I'll come and paint the car myself. Gear says Warhol, the most important artist of the 20th century, showed up with his entire entourage and holed up at one of the finest hotels in the city. He always tried to make his work appear industrial made. That's why his studio in New York City was called The Factory. But he decided to paint this car by hand because it was already an industrial design object. There are scratches from the handle end of his brush and his fingerprints. I adore the car. It's much better than a work of art. I try to portray a sense of speed, said Warhol. When a car is going really fast, all the lines and colors become a blur. Warhol painted some additional body panels as well. Spare bumpers and side moldings, not as souvenirs, but for a very specific purpose, one special endurance race. Warhol took just 24 minutes to create what would become a priceless work of art. By the time the television crews had rolled in, he was finished. Should I paint another car, he asked, pointing at a brand new BMW, one that belonged to the man who owned the paint shop. Over my dead body, the owner replied. The shop owner hates me when I tell that story, said Gerst, because he's still very embarrassed about that, that he didn't let Andy Warhol paint his car and turn it into an artwork. His signature on the car is signed with his finger. the 470 horsepower M88 inline 6 Warhol M1 car entered the 24-hour Le Mans with Manfred Winkelhock, Marcel Mignot, and Hervé Poulain driving.
Brazil's one-of-a-kind M1 Group 4 race car with Boulin, Winkelhock, and Mignon behind the wheel successfully completed 288 laps at Sarth, coming in sixth overall and second in its class. During the course of the race, it made contact numerous times, which is when Warhol spare bumpers came in handy. Well, as you know, Warhol has a particular kind of market. It's a, a very broad market, aggressive, and I suppose the collectors of his work would also like to own one of the automobiles, so therefore they're tremendously costly. But Warhol, in some ways, after Picasso, really symbolizes the 20th century, and uh, as I say, his market is ferocious. Andy Warhol's notable work. Four Marlins, 1966, valued at $69.6 .6 million. Triple Elvis, 1963, $81.9 million. Green Car Burning, 1963, $81.6 million. Turquoise Maryland, 1964, $91 million. Silver Car Crash, 1964, $106.5 million. Eight Elvises, 1963, $109.4 million. Art car number four, Andy Warhol, BMW M1, 1979, not for sale.